<laughs> so stressed. Um, okay, let's go to let's go on to modesty today. Hopefully, I haven't taken too much time there. <coughs> Okay, so now when it comes to modesty, you know, there's not actually really much said in the Bible about modesty. You know, there's the word um, moderation in one verse in Philippians. There's the word moderately used in, uh, I think, Jeremiah somewhere. can't remember. And then there's modest, which is the passage that most of us would think about when we think about how to dress and clothing in 1 Timothy 2. And this is it. That actually uses the word modesty. I think there's more said giving us principles about modesty. And that's really what I want to talk about over the next couple of weeks, depending on how long I take to preach this. But just principles in regard to clothing. Because, you know, yeah, you can preach just one sermon on modesty, but modesty isn't the only way we determine how we dress. So if we're going to talk about clothing and about dress, modesty is just one principle that we apply when we're thinking about how we should dress. 1 Timothy 2.9 in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or goals or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Now there's a similar passage in First Peter. It says here, Likewi Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word that that they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold and putting on an apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye, as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. So we have two passages here alluding to how Christian women ought to dress. Now, before I get into you know, what it's actually addressing in these two verses and some thoughts behind them, I just want to address the topic of you know, men and modesty. Because when we read these two verses, obviously they're directed at women. They're not directed at men because it's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a masculine attribute to be overly concerned about your appearance. You know, it's a feminine attribute to want to be beautiful, to want to do up your hair, to want to be noticed and be attractive. It's not a masculine um, uh, attribute. So I think a man that is overly concerned about his appearance is being girly. You know, it's, it's a girly thing to do. Like, you, you care, like, you want to look beautiful, you want to beautify yourself. Now, that doesn't mean that a man should not be concerned about his appearance at all but you know it's like there's a difference between you know being neatly presented right you know you want to be clean cut because you've got a job interview or you want to you don't want to look like a like a like a, like a shame right um to to like you know people that you know carry a comb with them and they're just constantly like doing their hair and they're obsessed with their hair you know there's, there's a difference obviously between staying in shape and wanting to be fit and, you know, wanting to be like the next Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? And just obsessing. You know, you see, I remember like when, when I used to go to the gym with my friends and you see those guys in front of the mirror and they're just like, yeah, like looking. I mean, there's a difference between just wanting to stay in shape and, and being obsessed with your figure and your, and your body image. You know, um, you know, wanting to be presentable, how you dress and, you know, dressing to your mood. You know, and like just having an outfit for, you know, every day of the week or whatever, right? Um, there's a difference. You know, it's like having, having decent shoes for the task. You know, I'm all for quality, right? Like having decent shoes to do. You know, we play futsal. You know, I bought some futsal shoes. But I'm not going to like have shoes for just different days of the week. You know, I feel like green today, so I've got my green shoes. And I feel like red today, I've got my red shoes. You know, shoes to match different outfits. I always felt that guys that obsessed about shoes were just so girly, you know, like, and then they'd have their, like, their shoes all displayed at home, like, you know, which one are they going to wear today? Like, if you take more than two minutes to decide, or not even that, if you take more than five seconds to decide what shoes you're going to put on, you've got too many shoes as a guy, right? Like, mate, a girl, like, it's a bit different, right? Because girl, girls are girls and there's a place for girls to want to doll up a bit. Um, but not guys. I always felt that guys that obsessed about shoes, they were just so girly. You know, they'd go to those, those shoe shops and, you know, that's why, like, you know, I went to Alex's place, Alex's shop to buy, 
bunch uh, like some soccer shoes. I can't even just buy like a plain pair of short soccer shoes because girl, guys are so girly these days that the soccer shoes need to be bright pink, bright green, bright orange. Can I just get a black and white pair of soccer shoes these days? Like, so it's just things like that. Like our, our, our culture has become so feminized that you can't even go and buy a plain pair of indoor soccer shoes these days that come in your size because everyone's buying all these girly stuff. Um, you know, like uh, when it, in 2009, um, you know, I decided to shave my head. And it wasn't because I was trying to be Steven Anderson or anything. Like, to, to be honest, the reason why I shaved my head is because I just could not be bothered doing my hair in the morning anymore. I, I just, year after year, you know, waking up with bed hair and trying to get it straight and putting gel in it and all that sort of stuff. And in 2009, I just decided, you know, I'm just sick of like dealing with my hair. I'm just going to shave it off. And if I look weird, people are just going to have to deal with it. Um, so then I, 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 did the, I did the crew cut and people were like, whoa, at first like they thought I was a monk and everything like that. But then now they just think, oh, that's just Victor. Victor just has hair like that. And then like, great. So I just felt like, oh man, my haircut, it just, it just freed me from the shackles of vanity. You know, because I just didn't, I can wake up in the morning, I have to worry, don't even, it's not even give it a thought. It's just you wake up, it's perfect, it's done. Um, and that's, you know, that's what I think we should be like as men. Like we shouldn't be overly concerned. Yes, you want to be presentable. You want to dress for the occasion. But, you know, there's a difference between, you know, just dressing for the occasion and just obsessing over um, things like that. You know, that's why I love uniforms. I love like, work, so at, at work when it has a uniform. My work doesn't, but then I just end up wearing a Staples shirt because I probably shouldn't say that to say where I work. But you know, I end up wearing like, you know, the, the Staples shirt because I just want to be able to wear the same thing every day. That's why I love uniforms. You don't have to th I don't have to think about what shirt to wear, whether it matches with my tie. I can just wear the same thing every day. And um, nobody bats an eye at work. <clears throat> So when it comes, in regards to men and modesty, you know, that's why the Bible, it talks about the wives. It talks about the girls because this is not something that should be directed at guys. And, you know, that's why when, when, when a guy hears a sermon on modesty and he's like convicted in his heart, it's because you're, you're being too girly. <laughs> You know, like, because it's not, it's, it's not directed at you. Like, when it comes to you, it's about, like, being, you know, confident and loving your, your husband. You know, love stuff, loving your husband. Loving your wife. You know, being, being manly. You know, that is not about modesty and your, and your appearance. It's just about, you know, not having long hair, not being ashamed, um, things like that. 